All right, so I today I'm going to show you how to use two masks on the Delta Keyer for green screening in DaVinci Resolve. I know this isn't a thing you're not normally going to have to do, but I actually was sent a video that had the person holding two things in their hands that were green, and I had to key and mask them out. At the time, I could not figure out how to use two masks, and I could not find anything online either. So I had to figure it out myself. Unfortunately, I figured this out after I was done with the project. So I figured why not make a video on this and show you how. This is going to be really quick. I'm not going to show you how to green screen. There's plenty of other better videos on that. But we'll just go over and how you can do it really quick in case you ever run into this awful problem. And I know if you're doing your own green screen, you wouldn't do that. But yeah, you, you might get sent that someday. So let's get in this. So we'll go look in here. Uh, I have my friend here, because uh, he has a green screen and I don't. He shot this on his iPhone. I mean, I think it looks pretty darn good for, yeah, it's iPhone 12. Wow. Okay. Anyways, send me this. You know, he's getting it. Thanks, man. And we'll go in here. We'll turn on the Delta Keyer. Uh, Avi, I know it's the, not the best green screen pullout, but this is not the point of the video. So, okay. If we wanted to come in here, we'd be like, oh, no, there's green, and now it's gone. So we'll go here. We'll get the polygon tool. We'll slap it on here into your mask, the blue ones for masking. And obviously, if you were going to do this for real, you'd have to like follow it and go all the way around. But we're not going to do that today. We're just trying to show examples. So I'm just going to put a circle around this. Boop. And then we're going to invert the mask. And then, oh, cool. So, you know, if this was close, you wouldn't see the background. But you get the point. So now we're like, okay, crap. I, you'd have to track this whole thing with this one mask and try to follow both, which would be nearly impossible, especially in this scenario. This is worse than what I dealt with. Um, and then you're like, all right, well, let's just, you know, slap it up. Ugh, why are you doing that to me right now? Playing games in my heart. So you come down, put another polygon mask on, and you're like, um, nah. I, I wish, like, I don't know why Resolve doesn't let you put two masks on it, but, you know, whatever. You're like, okay, how do I do this? So essentially what you want to do to make this easy on yourself is you just go ahead, we'll pull up a merge node, and you can just put one of these onto the background, one of these onto the foreground. And then you slap it down onto that mask again. And now we have this one, which is, whoop, this one, which is already selected. And let's make a little mask around this guy. And there we go. So for now, we're going to have to go to the merge node. Here's this. This is what you have to do. This is otherwise it's not going to work. You have to go to XOR. And basically, I read the manual and what this means. And basically what I derived from it was that it somehow flips the colors or something. It's kind of oddly worded. And I, I, I honestly didn't understand it except for that. But it does make sense if you take a look at these. Because for these both to work together, when you have it on XOR, one of them has to be inverted and the other not. If one is not, whoop, if we go here and we try to invert both of them, one's going to like go away and not work. So, and it doesn't really matter. You could say invert this one and uninvert this one. And that's really it. So you don't have, it doesn't matter. Like you don't have to worry about it being the foreground or the background. It's just going to work as long as the, it's on XOR. Uh, one's inverted and the other one is not. And then you have your, yeah, your merge set to XOR, which you already said. So that was a pretty quick video. Uh, I hope you dug it. I, I This is kind of an odd scenario that you're probably not going to run into. But if you ever did, this is going to save you a ton of time. And another thing to keep note of if it's something easier than maybe multiple objects in front of their body, you could just put a power window around it and track it. But like with something like this, obviously, that, you know, with my friend waving his hands around like that, you're going to have to track that object frame by frame. And I actually had to do that with the project I was on. So that's why uh, I wanted to make this tutorial in case you ever run into this issue. Obviously, if you shot it yourself, you're probably not going to let that happen. But... You get the point. So anyways, uh, I'll be releasing weekly videos. Uh, usually Wednesdays or Thursdays, I haven't quite decided yet because this is only my second video, but I hope you dug this. Leave a comment if you have any questions, criticisms, whatever, you know, let me know. So anyways, until next time, uh, go be creative.